Who, what's up y'all? Like, I don't even know what the title of this video is gonna be. But it's just, it make me mad, bruh. It make me mad reading this stuff. Like, it make me mad to see how we have totally went against God. And this is like, the stuff that's being done to us is really what we were supposed to do to them. All, of, oh my gosh, I just can't believe this stuff, y'all. Because right here in the book of Numbers, see, I gotta finish reading all of the book of Numbers, but um, I found this um, because I, I had to look up who are who the, who the Israelites' enemies were, and you know, through doing my research with that, we already know the Canaanites was our enemy. We already know um, the Philistines was our enemy. We know they were, and that's Ham's bloodline. Mind you, we come from the bloodline of Shem. We come from Shem's bloodline. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth, those, their, Japheth's kids were the Gentiles. We know we're, we don't, um, we're not supposed to follow the practices of the Gentiles either. We also know that Ham's bloodline, Canaan was cursed. And we also, well, everybody might not know, but through the family tree, that's why I say it's just so important for me to do these family trees to find out who our enemies are and then what, who, their descendants, because we are the descendants. All of us that are existing in today's society are descendants of these people of the book. No matter which side you want, you're descendants of them. You know, even down with the Ishmaelites, those are the Arabs. Like, all, everything stems from this book. That's why technically we all are people of the book, technically. But we're the chosen ones. And the stuff that God told us to do to them, he told us. He told us to not worship other gods. The whole Leviticus is him telling us what not to do. And we have definitely, we have been a complete abomination to the Lord. We have completely went and, and strayed away and did the practices of those other folks that was in the land. We were supposed to drive them out, but no. What did they do? They've been the ones driving us out. We didn't want some battles over time, obviously, for us to even have the amount of freedom we have now as black folks. We obviously have put in a fight. And that's why this thing, y'all, oh, it just get me so heated. Like, even with the, this is, this is sign language for K. So even with the, y'all know, the triple, the triple, <laughs> the triple them, this is K. So the triple, y'all know. I don't want to say it in the video, <laughs> but the, the white masked folks that come through destroying, that have destroyed our um, tabernacles, our churches. <laughs> like, I'm trying to, I'm trying not to like, but we were supposed to, they are, they've com completely, it's like, they know, they know this. They have really been taught everything like, Y'all, I can't even get it out. I can't even get it out. But in the book of Numbers, this is Numbers. Oh, man. Y'all know, I I'm sorry. This stuff made me want to cry, though, for real. Because we don't know who we are. And we have really, man, we have completely wanna get, went away from God. Everything in Leviticus. And I'm probably going to go over the, the rules and everything that he set forth to us. We're doing the complete opposite. We're engaging in all of these sexual acts. All this, the wickedness was sleeping with each other's men's wives, uh, the homosexuality sleeping with your stepdaughter, well, uh, raping your stepdaughters, molesting your stepdaughters and your stepsons, and your your sleeping with your sister's husband, boyfriend. I'm like all of this stuff is a complete abomination to the Lord. This is the stuff that them other folk, the Canaanites. This is the stuff that they were doing in the land before we came and inherited the land. This is the stuff that they were already doing over there. And God told Moses, he spoke to him to tell us what the laws of the Lord was for us to not. He reinforced this so many times. So many times, bruh. Even down to how, y'all know how black people are about me. 
how black people believe in having well done meat. If y'all gonna eat steak, y'all gonna eat it well done. And me and, and them other folk, you know, I had started to eat mine. Over time, I had started to eat mine um, medium well or like medium. Not a lot of blood, but like not no blood, but a little pink. But it's so funny because I used to have a friend. She used to be like, I am not eating no, no, it got to be well done. But when we go to these restaurants and stuff, they look at us like it's like we're weird for getting well done. And like we don't know proper etiquette because we don't eat well done. When God's law right here, Leviticus, but now, but chapter, chap, Leviticus chapter 19, we can already go over these laws. Oh my gosh, y'all. Even when it come down to this mixing race stuff, that's an abomination to the Lord. That is an abomination to the Lord. It's not to say that we're supposed to hate each other, but we're not supposed to mix. You don't see no, I'm sorry, I'm jumping. But Leviticus chapter 19, verse 26, do not eat any meat with the blood still in it. Who does that though? What kind of people do do that? We know the ones who do do that. And then that we're trying to adapt their practices. Not all of us, because many of y'all still eat well done meat. But a lot of us, like I know I, at one point I was like that before I stopped. I don't really even eat steak no more. Um, I don't have any steak in like a year. Um, but before I would get my medium steak because it do taste uh, a little bit more tender or whatever. And I they say that's the proper way to digest it so that it don't stay in your system as long. But that was an abomination to the Lord. You're supposed to eat it well done. You're not supposed to because that's a blood sacrifice. If you're eating animals or blood, if you're shedding blood, unless it's in the practice that he taught for us as doing an offering to him, we're not supposed to do certain things. Like, yeah, during the Passover, he told us to put the blood on the house or whatnot. But other than that, like, we're not supposed to do certain type of blood sacrifices. That's not for the children of Israel. And right up here, chapter, we gonna, we need to go through all of these. Because this is everything that we do. Everything that he told the children of Israel not to do is what we did. And... Even about the um the the mixing cattle. He told us not to do that. Let me um and we know technically we are mammals. You don't see no other type of species mixing up. No, they don't mix up with you don't see um giraffes mixing with elephants, you don't see freaking wolves mixing with dogs, you don't see that. And then we're the ones who've been breeding the dogs. Even dogs are not supposed to be mixed breeding. But you know, we got this thing with having mixed bred dogs and stuff like that. And we even do that as a, as a, our own species in different breeds. As the human race, we're different breeds. We're all of one type of mammal, but it's different breeds of us. This is why we are coming different varieties. We have us as a uh, black folk, the... Chinese, the, the Europeans, all of us, we're different breeds and we're not supposed to be mixing up. That's an abomination to the Lord. It says right here, where did it go? See, ooh, I even, and that's why, I, that's really why we're supposed to get tattoos. It says, do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord. Do not degrade your daughter by making her a prostitute. The land will turn to prostitution and be filled with wickedness. Just like he told us not to sacrifice our children to Molech. And so many people have sacrificed their children. Look at how many women will sell their daughters off. Look how many women will know their men. Oh, we need a really, I need to do a whole type of video about, I don't, I'm all over y'all because I cannot believe this stuff, y'all. We're going to do a different video about that. We're going to literally do a whole video about everything the the whole laws because we completely are doing the exact opposite of what he told us to do selling your daughters to your husbands you know your husband looking at her or your boyfriend looking at her or your whoever it is you know that they touching on her doing it and you still leaving her giving her away you sacrificing your child and sacrificing your sons too let's be clear because it's not just the girls that's getting molested so many of these men men been molested and this is why they on a the down low and fighting all these identity issues within their own sexuality because they don't even know because they didn't had their innocence stolen by a man 
or even a woman, but a lot of these men, man, the proof is in the pudding. Y'all need to, if you don't believe it, look on YouTube at the stories that's on YouTube. Look at the stories on him. I watched this one dude, um, it was like, he, you know, he obviously like dressed like a girl or whatever, but he told his story. That shit made me cry, bro. It made me cry to see what his own father did to him. His own father was doing to him. And it's sickening, bro. It's sickening. It's sickening. But, mm, it's saying, you shall keep my statue. This is Leviticus chapter 19, verse 19. You shall keep my statutes. You shall not let your cattle gender with a diverse kind. You shall not sow your field with mingled seed. Neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon you. In the NIV version, keep my decrees. Do not make different kinds of animals. Do not play, do not plant your field with two kinds of seed. Do not wear clothing woven of two kinds of material. So the part that I wanted to touch on though was do not make different kinds of animals. Are we not mammals? Are we not mammals? We're not supposed to do that. But people want to do what they want. Everybody wants these mixed breed. You want your, your children to be mixed breed because you're, for one, you don't like who you are or you're trying to get a benefit of what that other race can provide. Many black people that mate with the white people, it's because y'all want y'all kids to come out with these certain type of hair textures and these certain complexions and you think by them being light that they'll get the benefit of being in this all white area that you're living in with the person and all of the benefits that you think it'll provide to them and it's the complete opposite because look at how many of them coming out on tiktok who's biracial who talk about the the pro the cons of being biracial because they're not accepted half the time by either side their white folks look at them and, and demean them and they don't include them in their um stuff and then the black people don't they don't want to they don't end up fitting in with the black people because they're like we consider them this and that you know even though most times i mean i don't do that if you're biracial i could tell when you got a speck of black in you and when you when you biracial i consider you black but some people that's biracial don't want to be considered black so look at the things it do when you mix in the breeds up look at what it does just like we be mixed breeding these and we mix breed dogs dogs is the only things that the only other mammal that's pretty much bred. And that's because humans do that to them. You don't see no other animals in the world, no other wild animals, no other animals doing that. They even started with the mule. Was it the, they mixed the donkey with uh, a horse or something like that. Like they been, them folk, our enemies, the Israelites' enemies, are the ones who started that whole mixed breeding thing. But something else I wanted to read. We're going to do another video about these laws, these the, the laws. Man, God said this. Do not turn to idols or make metal gods for yourselves. I am the Lord your God. Oh, man, like so many various laws right here. Leviticus chapter 18, chapter 19. That's what I'm saying. Are they discussing these in the churches? This is what I'm saying. Like, are they discussing what really matters? It's like, are they going over the first four books of life of God's will for us, of what he told Moses and Joshua and them to speak to the children of Israel? Is he, are they going over this stuff though? And I saw this other video the other day. This is what I'm saying. This, they know this one guy, it was a video, honestly, I, that I was watching about um, men on the DL. And it was this pastor and the fact, that, and this was right after I did that video about the Levites realizing that, oh, we're the Levites. He said that in the video about, um, he act like he ain't, when you could clearly tell he's Dio himself, but he was really talking about, um, the effect with, um, like the churches and what's like, what goes on and just something he was talking about in the video. And this was years ago that he did this video, um, but it came across my thing. Because you know how one thing about the algorithm, the algorithm, if you watch one video about something, you're going to watch another one. Because I don't even know how it first came up on my thing. Um, 
I don't even know how the first one popped up, but once I clicked on that one, now I then I, the algorithm starts showing more DL videos. So I watch one and because I'm really this is my lane. I really because I know a lot of men. I I wanted to do a whole video on this. Like I sorry I'll be jumping over, but I wanted to do a whole video on that, you know, because I just got so much experience and I I've been around so many dudes and I can pick up on I pick up on stuff like I pick up on stuff and just off of my own experiences it's just <laughs> it's like I can't even I wanted to really do a video and I probably will end up doing a video about this DL thing because this is a big thing and so many men especially our we they're on a down low this is why women can't you it, it's hard for women out here especially it ain't even just black women because a lot of them up uh, them men they the starters of this stuff okay but y'all not be all over the place and i'm sorry for that but this stuff is really it's really sickening it's really sickening because the things that if we would have followed the laws for us, we wouldn't be in a predicament that we're in now. If we would have followed the laws that God set for our God set for us, and I started following other gods and worshiping Baal and Azrath and them. Well, we're gonna talk about this. I'm over here because I came from the library today printing out some stuff because I don't even feel like sitting down writing all I'm, I'm like, it's gonna take me too long to write out all of this stuff. But so I just went and printed out. I'm gonna just like make a binder of stuff. That way I ain't gotta waste so much time writing out everything. But this stuff, you guys, it goes so deep. And this is why God is mad at us. And I'm about to read it. Um, I'm about to read it. So, I really got to do this laws. We got to do that video about laws. See, confirmation. Of God want me to... God want me to do a video on that. So we're going to do another separate video on that. But I really did this video to talk about how we were supposed to be the ones that were supposed to be the ones burning down their altars, burning down the enemy's altars. God told us to do that so we can get their land. But they have done that to us. Look at the history of our churches. Look at the history of our churches. What they have done to our churches. Because that's what I'm about to read right here. In Numbers chapter 33, um, it says, this is verse 52. Well, I'm going to read from 50 to 53. So it says, the Canaanites are to be destroyed. God ordered us to destroy them. God, the promise that Abraham made, the, the covenant between God and Abraham was that he's going to give our children the land of the Canaanites, the Amorites, all our enemies. He, we were supposed to take their land. That was the promise. So he told us, it says, and this is Numbers chapter 33, verses 50 through 54. And let me also pull it up in um, NIV version. This stuff make me want to cry, y'all, because we're so, man. And we be sitting here complaining. We complain, complain, complain. We got the audacity to complain about why we at the bottom, about why our community is so destroyed. And just to know, just to, as I'm reading, like everything is about territory. Look at, look at, I mean, just pay attention. What is the war going on right now? What is it really about? It's about territory. It's about land. It's about getting that territory. They're trying to conquer other people's land. This is what it's been about since the beginning of time. It's been about territory. Look at, in our hoods. What do we kill each other over? What do our men kill each other over? Territory. This my block. Don't come make no money off my block because this block got the, it, Big money come through on this block. All the junkies will be on this block. So I want this block because this is where the money coming through at. You go down there and get that block. You can't come hustle up on this block. This is my corner. You can't come. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. When initially, because certain parts of land is good for certain things. And now that I'm just like realizing this whole thing with farming and like different seasons and the 
the benefit, the soil over here. Like, this is why America is so... Our soil here is something great about the soil here. This is the natural way that God, when God created the world, the way the, the, the soil is over here. We have a, a great, um, I don't even know the word I'm looking for, but we have like our soil is, is that basically. And I don't even know the word. It's like we have rich soil. The soil is, it's, it's literally about the, the chemical makeup of our land. And that's why like the importance of being by the waters, being near the resources, it's all really about resources to survive and thrive. <coughs> this is even why they really, mm, this is, oh, this is so crazy. But it says, the Lord spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you are passed over the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures and destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down all their high places. And you should dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell there, for I have given you the land to possess it. And you should divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families. And to the more, and to the more, you shall give the more inheritance and to the fewer, and you should give the less inheritance. And every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falls. According to the tribes of your fathers, you shall inherit. But if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which you let remain there shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides and shall vex you in the land where you dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I should do to you as I thought to do to them. Wow. See, I'm just reading even that last part. Moreover, shall it come to pass that I should do to you as I thought to do to them. And this is what has happened. What was supposed to be done to them has been done to us because we didn't listen. Because we didn't listen. He told us to go. That's what I'm saying. People act like when you know God, you know that God is definitely love, but he is a savage, period. He said to go, when he said to go destroy them, that's what he meant. Not giving grace and not, none of that. He said, go demolish them. Go burn nature barnacles down. He said, Dry, you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy, destroy all their pictures, destroy all their molten images. And quite pluck down all their high places. We know where the high places is. Your tabernacles, your altars. And where's the altar at? At the church. But, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> I'm choking over here. That's because every time I'm doing a video about this stuff, the enemy, be, the enemy be hating, bruh. What time is it? 3.02? Okay. I still got an hour before I got to get up out of here. Y'all, I just... I can't. I can't. I can't believe... And this is what they have done to us. They have took our stuff down and chased us out of our land. The stories I hear, because I told y'all, I don't know history on like a, a regular t history type term. I'm learning history from the Bible. And then I go looking up stuff about like what's the taught history, you know, uh, that, you know, we was taught in schools that, well, y'all was taught because I wasn't listening, obviously. <laughs> I don't know what I used to be doing in school, bruh. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> but to see, and I just looked up all a history of the churches that's been burned to hell. And then who are the ones who burned them down? But we were supposed to do that. To theirs because their churches are the ones teaching the wrong things, teaching things that are abomination to the Lord. Like I told y'all in them videos back, any of these churches that, that celebrate all these holidays, Halloween, Christmas and stuff, we're not, as the Israelites, 
we are the way these European Jews move are literally how we're supposed to move. That the way they move is literally how we're supposed to move. And I gotta keep doing my research about them too. Because I just feel like I've I've been doing some some stuff on them, some not stuff, some research about the different types of Jews that there is. I got my book over there. But even with them, I don't believe we're going to just wait. We're going to wait. But it's funny because it's a reason. This is what I'm saying. Everything that happens in your life is for a reason. Because when I lived in Jewtown, because when I used to live in Baltimore, and Baltimore is um, in Park Heights, like it's in the city of, of Park Heights, it's like a divide. It splits up. That, then the hood is over there. The, the black hood is over there. And then on this side, coming into Pikesville, which is where I lived at, like um, it's where the Jews and then white people live on on this side. But at the split of like, um, it's like Cold, um, not Cold Spring, what street was that? Like Belvedere on up. So Park Heights and Belvedere on up that way. That's the black side. That's where the hood is. That's the, the hood. And right down here, which is only a couple lights up. It's like a literally, and it used to be this meme going around where Park Heights meet the Jews. I'm about to see if I can pull it up for y'all right quick. Um, it used to be like a little meme going around. And I, I pay attention to, you know, and how they move, like how they operate. They're, all their kids go to one, like go to their own schools. All the girls go to one school. All the boys go to one school. They have like their own community. It's like they live in their own world inside of a world. They have big, they all drive the same big bangs. They all wear the same things. They all wear wigs. None of them show their real hair. They all wear wigs. All the guys look like they all walk. They, on a Sabbath day, like they really take the practices very serious. And they always go to their church. All you do is seeing them walking up and down, walking up and down the street or having long lines, backing up the whole the whole dang on traffic, the whole street, because they in all these long lines for their schools, but they don't follow like traditional, like our type, like public school system. They don't, they don't follow that. They have their own thing that they do. They have their own thing that they do. And I just, when I was, you know, living there, I just pay attention because I go walking around the neighborhood and stuff. And I'll go walk on a side over there because I lived in like the apartments and um, what the apartments was called, but I live right there at the corner, um, and you know I just seen them walk and their synagogue, uh, you know their little church building was right across the street from me, and they would have like a police there all the time, whatever when they had their little church stuff, but they are like the way they operate. Besides that nasty incest stuff that they that they do, we're supposed to operate like that togetherness. They they build up their communities for each other. Like they all invest. They are they they have a real unity, and this is how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to come together, bruh. But it was something else that I wanted to read too. Okay. Because it says the nations which were left to test Israel because we didn't kill off all of the, the we didn't do what we were supposed to do. He told us to go in there and murk them all and, and leave none left behind. We were supposed to to destroy them. What he say to smite them, kill them dead. What Gucci say, put them in a the dirt, put them in a the dirt. We were supposed to put them in a the dirt and we didn't. So it's saying, this is Judges chapter 3. So it says, These are the nations the Lord left to test all those Israelites who had not experienced any of the wars in Canaan. He did this only to teach warfare to the descendants of the Israelites who had not had previous battle experience. The five rulers of the Philistines, all the Canaanites, the Sidonians, and the Hivites living in Lebanon, mountains from Baal, Hermon, to Libo, Hamath. They were left to test the Israelites to see whether they would obey the Lord's commands, which he had given their ancestors through Moses, or whether they would continue to adapt 
the 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 ops their ways, which is the ops is the Philistines, Canaanites, Sidonians, Havites. Everybody was against us. Just like everybody is against us now. This is how I know what it is really, because everybody is against us. Nobody is for us for real. Nobody. And then we even against each other like some idiots. We is so, man, we are, we got to get it together. And that's what God sent me here for because I'm going to keep preaching this stuff. And we need to really get right with God and learn our identity. You know, I just feel like we're far too gone. But like God said in here, like he asked um, Noah before he destroyed the earth, if he can find just even five, because Noah kept bringing down that number. He said, what about if I can find, was it Noah? I think it was, what if I can find about 50 righteous souls in the city, in this wicked city? Then he said, okay, 45. Then he said, 40, 35. Th he kept going down until five. So God said, okay, if I could find, if you could find five, five righteous souls, then I'll lead it. He couldn't even find five righteous souls. But that's sad. Like, because many of us really think that knowing God and saying God's name in vain. Look, what, he's, what did he say in the Ten Commandments? Oh, yeah. Don't just say his name in vain. Don't play with him like that. Don't only, don't, don't say his name, but then really don't practice what he's telling us to do. Like, he don't like that. God don't like that. God don't like ugly, and we be acting ugly. But it says, The Israelites lived among the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, which is all our enemies. <laughs> they took their daughters in marriage and gave their own daughters to their sons and served their gods. What was I just telling y'all? And what did Isaac tell um, Esau? And Esau purposely, and mind you, them folk are the descendants of Esau. They're the descendants of Esau. And, you know, certain groups of them are the descendants of, um, of Esau, the Edomites, all of the Edomites. And they're our enemies too. Everybody's our enemies. And Esau purposely, and what do... Esau purposely went against Isaac. He purposely went against his father. Mind you, Esau was Isaac's favorite son. And Jacob was Rebekah's. And because of Rebekah's ways is why the whole situation happened where Jacob finessed uh, Esau for his birthright. And now this is why the, the 12 tribes of Israel, us, while we was had, while we was granted with the Lord our God, while we was supposed to get this inheritance, and Esau um, purposely went against, after his father died, after Isaac died, he purposely went against his father's wishes. His father told him not to marry them, not to deal with them Canaanite women. And he purposely went and married them and had children with them. And it just reminds me of like modern day times now because a lot of the, a lot of them white girls who have babies with black men, they know that their dad, their parents don't like them black men. And so even same for some of the black men. Y'all know y'all mamas don't want y'all with them women, but y'all purposely do it anyway to spite them because of some harsh treatment that your parents have done to you. So now you're spiting them. That's what Isu did to Isaac. He spited them by purposely going with the per the, with the ones you didn't want them with. Like many of us do. We know our parents don't like this person and because I, we, we, you know, want to get back at our parents and stuff, we purposely do things to spite them, to go against their wishes for us. But it says they took their daughters in marriage and gave their own daughters to their sons and served their gods. And that's what y'all do. Because as soon as y'all marry into them type families, y'all want to do everything that they want because you want to fit in so bad. You want to be liked by they, by your your white mother-in-law and father-in-law so bad that you're going to start doing what they want you to do. You're going to start doing their practices. Lame. And it says, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God and served the bows and asherahs. The anger of the Lord burned against Israel so that he sold them into the hands of. My Bible don't say that. It says. Oh, yes, it do. 
See, that's why I don't like reading this NIV version because I hate when they switch up the words. This is why I got to read for my own. Because it likes to it likes to switch up. It, and, it, and it be that one word for me that makes it all make sense. So I hate when they do that with this NIV version. But sometimes it's like easier to read from NIV. Um, but then sometimes I like it's easier to read from this one. But when I'm like doing a video, sometimes I know a lot of people read from the NIV or the newer, like the non-King James version. But anyway... It says, therefore, the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Cush Rithim, king of Mesopotamia, and the children of Israel served Cush and Rithim eight years. And when the children of Israel cried to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel who delivered them. Wow. Yeah, he was purposely selling us. God was purposely allowing these things to happen to us. He was purposely selling us to the leaders of our enemies, like giving them over to them because we don't listen. And then he was trying to, he does this. That's why I say before he allows the enemy and the devil, he allows them to get to us, ultimately to to get, get us back on track. Because it's like, okay, if I sell you into this situation, I let them steal y'all and treat y'all bad i let them oppress y'all when i save y'all from that y'all gonna be like thank you god and he feels like at that point maybe we'll be like okay let me get right with god let me worship god because he saved me but a lot of us still don't it's like god will save us and then we back doing the same thing again and then when we hit rock bottom again now we crying out to god again and he gotta come through and say today again and hoping that they would get you get you right with me hoping that that would get you right and it still don't be getting us right half the time but nonetheless y'all because i want to finish doing some more reading on my own before i gotta go but we gotta get it together bruh we have to understand that we are them and everything that we were supposed to do that's why this is just like so good this is like a god dang all this is better than real housewives don't nothing happen by mistake you know nothing happen like everything this is where they know how to do everything from like i say everything comes from this book it's just weird it's weird how life is literally built on this <laughs> and this is why even with some people like People be like, nah, this church not for me. That's because your spirit don't sit right with that type of a church, with that church, because that spirit is operated, that church is operated by a different God. Especially for us, we got to be careful. This why, but this also is why a lot of people then, um, then strayed away from the churches. And which, and because people equate church to God, they feel like church is God. And the only way you can get closer to God is going to church. When you go to certain churches, if they... If they, you know, treat you a certain kind of way and all of these things that they do, and if, if they do that stuff to you, then you start to equate them with God and be like, why would I worship God? Why would I do this because of the, the representative of God? Because ultimately the Levites, this is what I was saying in that video that I, that I was talking about, the guy has said that the, these priests, the Levites, he was talking about the church. And how, you know, when I was talking about the, the guy that was talking about the download stuff, and when he said that word, I was like, dang, so they know. So these pastors know who they really are. And they know. That's why I said, ultimately, I really believe us as the Levites are the reason for the children of Israel being lost. I think we're really the ones responsible for why the black community is in shambles like it is. Because we ain't teach the real. We're teaching other God's practices. Not our God. Lord God of the Hebrews. Lord God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. And we're Jacob's children. 
Yes, we might be split into two kingdoms, Israel and Judah. But nonetheless, Judah is Jacob's child and all of the other children of Israel are Jacob's children. The Levites are still Jacob's children. So ultimately, we're all still the Israelites. And we didn't try to the practice, practices of our cousins because technically, Esau and them is our cousins. Ishmael and them is our cousins. This is why they be saying, like some of them I've been saying, saying in the comments, they've been like, we're all God's people. Da, 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 da. No. No, because y'all have other God. Y'all y'all have another God. Um, <laughs> But ultimately, we are all technically related because we all come from Adam and Eve. We all stem from the creators. You know, the first two humans that ever existed. And it I saw um this because in this thing that I printed out about our enemies, it says in judges, you know, which is where I was reading from. It says in judges, the tribe seek to drive them out. Judah in the house of Joseph had success, but others fail. So Judah and Ephraim and Manasai, I think that's his name, Manasai, because Joseph had two sons that was part of the 12 tribes of Israel because the Levites was removed. So it was Joseph. And that's why Joseph, both of Joseph's sons got the blessing because of what, because God blessed Joseph because of what his brothers had did to him by selling him into slavery and to the Ishmaelites and then to, to the Egyptians. And that's why both of his sons got them blessings. And what's the odds that book I got the other day? And I read it to my daughter the last night. Uh, we randomly got it in the mail. In this book right here, like we got it in the mail. I don't even know. And it's Brothers, a Hebrew legend. And both of the brothers were given gifted an inheritance. Um, and um and he had to split the land. And one of the brothers didn't have any, he didn't marry or he didn't have any hair. And the other one did. But they wasn't fighting. They was really trying to help each other out. Um, that's, mm, y'all know. I, just, I know this book is, I know it's the reason that that book got mailed to me. And it's just funny. I didn't sign up for that book. It was like wrapped in Christmas paper. I don't know. They keep giving me Christmas books, Christmas gifts and stuff. Like, um, but it says, um, in Judges, the tribes seek to drive them out. Like I have read, Judah and the house of Joseph had success, but others fell. This was because the people did not break down the altars. Like he told them to destroy their um, their high places. He told them to destroy it. Judges 2.2. 2. And you shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land, but you shall throw down their altars. But you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? He told them to destroy it, and they didn't. And it says, they did not break down the altars and serve Baal. Judges and that's the part I read, Judges 3.3, 3 gives us a list of nations left in the land. And um, Judges chapter 3, five, verse 5 through 6 is one of the saddest verses as the promise was not fulfilled. The land was not totally theirs. We were supposed to have all the land, but the Israelites did not get all the land because we did not, um, we did not kill off all the other people like we were supposed to to take the land. We did not drive them out. They had, they had We cohabited with the various Canaanite, Hittite, and Perizzite groups. The promise of Numbers 3355. Let's go to Numbers 3355 and see what the promise was. Because that's what I was on to. I lost the page. Though. The promise was, it says, but it says, and you shall divide. Oh, that's what I was reading to y'all earlier. Dang, so that's what I'm saying. It repeats this. A lot of this stuff throughout the whole Bible is repeating itself. It's truly repeating itself. Because I are, I did read this to y'all already. Because the promise was, 
if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land before you, then it shall come to pass that those which you let remain on them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your side and shall vex you in the land where you dwell. Meaning, if you don't drive them out, they're going to be a pain in your ass. They're going to oppress you. They're going to beat on you. They're going to torture you if you let them just stay there. They're going to torture you to try to push you out. And that's what has happened. Look what we know. Look at how many people have talked about that. Um, the history of getting of chasing like what's that lake was it Lake Lanier I think and they be talking about how um they built how they how it was that was a black city or something at one point I think that's in Georgia how it was a black city and it was a bunch of thriving black businesses there and they chased them out burnt down their stuff and chased them out and then built this lake over it and all of this stuff yeah, that's because that was supposed to be we, what we were supposed to do to them. But we didn't listen. We let them stay there. So now they're going to run us out. Now they're going to run us out. And they shall vex you in the land where you dwell. Yeah, and then they're going to cause you distress. They're going to irritate you to push you out. And then it says, the type of sins the Canaanites were involved, involved in are mentioned in the Bible. This gives us an idea of the type of life in Canaan before Israel got there. Deuteronomy chapter 9 verses 4 through 5 makes it clear the nations were involved in gross wickedness. God's judgment was pending for many years. Leviticus 18, which is what, why I didn't read all of that, so I'm going to do that in a different video, gives us a list of the horrors of everyday practice in the land. Sexual sins, child sacrifice, homosexuality, and the perversion with animals are listed. And add witchcraft and the occult to the list. Because that is what's practiced there. That's what they do. And we adopt their practices. And do this to our own and destroy our own community. Because we're adapting other people's practices. We're letting them do these things to us. And then now we're coming and doing this stuff to our own community. Like, just look at even, like, the jails. Like, man, that's why I say I got to do that video about the download because all of that stuff, ultimately, people think it's just that stuff stems only from jail. Yeah, the practices go down in jail. But a lot of that stuff been, practice, been going on with these dudes before they even was old enough to go to jail. That's what even got them into the behaviors that landed them in jail is because of something that was going on wrong in the home that led them out into the street. Neglectful mothers, neglectful fathers, wicked fathers, wicked mothers, doing these heinous acts to their kids. And we wonder why these kids, we wonder why. What, what even causes the dudes to get out into the streets? What causes that? I know for both of my cousins that are both dead now, both dead led out into these lifestyles that's why i said i want to do that video about the down low stuff because i know firsthand experience on this stuff this is why i say god allowed everything to happen the way it's supposed to he allows man he allows everything and people don't want to speak up about certain things and silence is all a part of the enemy's agenda keep it silence keep it not talked about keep brushing it under the rug like we do for years and years and generations and generations and wonder why our community is in shambles and people all think it's all this surface level relationship issues when a lot of the, the things that's going on on the surface level is rooted from something anything that comes out to the surface stems from a root issue it's rooted but nobody wants to get down to the roots it's too it's too painful to get down to the root of a lot of this stuff because this is exactly what's going on. And the fact that it's a perversion with the animals. Because this is like a little study guide. Um, you know, about Israel's enemies. So that's why, I, like this little part I just read to y'all. But it's just in the perversion with animals are listed. Because I feel like that's been going on since the beginning of time. Like I said to y'all in one of these videos. And this video already long. But I'm a, I got like I just feel like I got a ton and ton a ton of research to to do. But this is what really excites me 
this is what I'm really passionate about. This is my purpose. I found a purpose that helps me and helps others. And I really just love it. Um, but this is where, like, that whole story of Tarzan. When you realize that all these books, stories, a lot of this stuff, it comes from somewhere. A lot of this stuff is not just made up. It ain't just made up. It might seem made up because to you, like, certain certain stories that you hear, you're like, wow, I can't believe that that's true. I can't believe that that really happened. That seems like it's a, that, that seems like a fictional story. It's like that Lifetime movie with the dad had the daughter in the, like, in the downstairs. The mama never knew. She thought the daughter ran away and got kidnapped or something the whole time the husband was down there the dad had her downstairs and locked in some dungeon type in the basement getting her pregnant with all these babies and stuff his own daughter that was based on a true story but to a person who never been through nothing like that you would think that is that's fiction that ain't real no it's real it's real and just because you ain't never been through it you don't know nobody that been through it, don't mean this stuff ain't happen and a lot of these stories a lot of these stories come from somewhere. A lot of these movies come from somewhere. Just like our favorite movie, Baby Boy. Is that, if that's not what this modern day black community is, especially in like the, the hood stuff, a lot of these dudes is Jodies and a lot of the girls is Evats having all these abortions, doing all this stuff, having this, this everything about Baby Boy. Now that I'm grown, it's like I look at that movie in a whole different way. And I see how it relates to our community in so many ways. This stuff is what they're observing in the real world, real experiences. They're making it into movies. A lot of Tyler Perry's movies have truth to it. Just like this, this, um, the show Sisters. That's a real, this is what we really go through in real life. Real sisterhoods dealing with these same type of issues with guys, then having your friendship, your friends um, group circle. It's the same stuff. P Valley. And y'all think it ain't no truth to that? All these little murders that's out here. They're trying to, but people are not. It's like people are so green. And this is why the world is able, the enemy is able to, to, to do what he do out here. Because so many green folks out here. But this video an hour long. I'm sorry if it was all over the place, but nonetheless, this is some very important information and we, 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 we gotta, we gotta realize who we are at the end of the day because the time is coming, the time is coming, but we're going to have to fight it out. It's coming. And the same way they have driven us out of our land, it's time to drive them back out. Cause one thing about me I'm with getting it back in blood. That's how I feel. I feel like if they they do that to our stuff, let's do it back to them. That's why that little thing I got with this little tit for tat thing a little bit, it's kind of, it's kind of beneficial in certain because people don't understand how certain things feel until you do it back to them. So they come burning down our tabernacles. Let's get this. They just randomly smoking our people. Okay, let's start getting getting this back. Body for body. Blood for blood. Let's get it back in blood. Period. Like, let's do it. We're not going to keep on sitting here just protesting all this bullshit that don't matter, all of that. All of the stuff that we doing, no. Get it back in blood. Period. Body for body. Same way the hoods do. And that's what blow me with the hoods because, like, y'all do that to each other in the hoods. Oh, he smoked your brother. You gonna go get him, go get his people. Y'all do that to each other like that, but y'all won't do it to the oppressors. That doesn't make sense to me. Y'all don't mind taking out your own kind, but when it's time to do that, use that same energy on them, y'all won't do it. It's just, we got to wake up. Y'all rob y'all own, own kind before y'all 
before y'all rob them motherfuckers coming in your hood, setting up shop, making all this money off of you, then going back to they, they nice suburban land, taking all your money, all your hard-earned money, and then treating you like trash as soon as you come in they stores, watching you, stalking you, especially for us going to these beauty supply stores. They watching us like a hawk, like we want to steal from them when we making them rich. And they taking all of our money and then going back to, to, to the suburbs. They don't live nowhere near where they set up shop at to make money off of us. But yeah, we'll, we'll kill our own, hate our own when they come and shop and make money off of us. That's why they play with us like that because we stupid for real. We don't know who we, we don't know our worth. And if we knew better, we'd do better. We'll learn to start coming together in the ways that really matter and destroy them. But until the next time, y'all, I'll see y'all in the next video because this type of stuff, it really, it really bothers me. It really do. And it's a reason it bothers me. I don't know why God had to choose me, but I know why he chose me. Because one thing about it, But I'll see you on the next video. Deuces.